Dear ICCS members and friends, good afternoon and welcome uh, to this uh, informative session that we arranged with Carda, ICCS member. My name is Carol Capone and I'm the marketing executive at ICCS. Today we will have with us Diana, which is the head of marketing at Carda. Hi, Diana, thank you for being uh, with us today. Hi, Carla, Hello. nice to have Hi. everyone. So just a quick introduction about Diana before leaving the word to her. Diana, uh, she's, uh, as I told you, is uh, the head marketing at Cardup, which is a fast growing credit card platform that enables uh, the use of credit cards in places which are not accepted yet today. Uh, she's actually a professional who's been, uh, who's been having like a, more than a decade of experience in card and payment industry. In fact, she was uh, uh, working for um, Amex, at American Express, before joining uh, the founding team in Cardano. Well, now, with any further ado, I shall now leave the word to Diana, who will start this uh, session today. Thank you, Diana. Thanks, everyone, and thanks, Carola, for the introduction and for having me today. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for taking time to join, uh, join us on this session to find out how you can maximize your credit card benefits on unconventional spend. As Carla mentioned, I'm Diana and I um, have spent over a decade in the cards and payment space um, and I've accumulated quite a bit of knowledge about credit cards, both for professional as well as personal reasons, which I'm very glad to be able to share with everyone here today. So in this session, um, I'll be sharing some tips about how you can get returns on every dollar that you're spending today. Um, and please feel free to ask questions at the end of the session. We'll be addressing them so that everyone can learn more and benefit others with uh, the questions that you have. So um, today I'll be covering a couple of points um, around the benefits of paying with credit cards, um, how to choose, how to shift unconventional spend onto your cards, as well as some tips on what you should look out for and help that will help you choose the best credit cards that is suitable for you. Um, so before we start off the session, we, uh, we would like to do a quick poll um, to understand more about everyone that's on the call today. So the question is, what credit cards do you have today with you? So we'll just give a couple of uh, a minute or so for everyone to select their answers and, and let's see what everyone has. So we have personal credit cards, uh, corporate or business cards, both or none of the above. Okay, as I see, um, most of uh, the answers is saying personal credit cards, right? All right. Would, would you be able to see the, the answers, uh, Carla? Or? You don't see it? Majority. Mm. Ah, I you don't see it because I, maybe you were yeah, maybe read in a yeah. presentation mode. Ah, okay, so I can tell you, yeah. Okay, so basically the um, like the highest rate is personal credit cards. So uh, sixty-four okay. percent of the people voting said that the personal credit cards mm -hmm. is their answer. Then it's okay. followed by twenty-nine percent of both personal and corporate credit cards, and then we have none of the above. No one has actually selected corporate business credit cards. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the uh, sharing the poll results, Carla. Okay. So as we can tell, um, thank you. As you can tell, there are, there's actually a very high um, credit card usage rate in Singapore. We have about 1.6 million credit card holders um, and with about 8 million cards in circulation in Singapore, that means that on average, it, each person has about five credit cards. So that's quite a big number and uh, I think that's something that's quite unique in Singapore market as well as some of the other markets in the region. Um, and the reason for that, you know, given the popularity of credit cards, uh, why is that the case that everyone has so many credit cards? And, you know, from the poll results, we can also hear that, you know, we've, we've seen that, like, I think over probably 90% of you have selected that you have um, either a personal or both credit cards. So moving on to, like, talking about the benefits of paying with credit cards. So why do we, why do we use credit cards? Um, I think the most obvious reason and the, the reason that most people are familiar with would be around the rewards that you earn on your card. But aside from that, um, using credit cards can actually also help you free up cash for your business. And it can also help you save time in terms of like your 
payments processing for your business payments. So I'll share about each of them. But first, let me start with the rewards because I think that's something that's something that's easily relatable to every one of us, even as an individual. So why do you use credit cards? Credit cards reward you for your spend. In general, putting your rewards onto cards means that you are able to earn rewards for every single dollar that you're spending on. What type of rewards are we talking about? There are three main types of rewards that we see on credit cards. We have miles. Um, so some, some credit cards earn you air miles that go directly into your frequent flyer program. So an example of that would be the American Express Chris Flyer cards. Um, there are a range of Chris Flyer cards that American Express has with um, the company. And basically, for every dollar that you spend, you earn between 1.1 miles up to 1.3 miles that goes directly into your Chris Flyer account. So these are uh, miles that you earn for everything that you're spending on, be it your shopping, your dining, your travel, when the days of travel were around, and so on. The next type of cards would be like your points cards. So what that means is that uh, depending on your credit card um, issuer, you have different points currencies. DBS, for example, you will earn DBS points for every dollar that you spend. Uh, UOB would be uni dollars or Skibank, for example, would be thank you points. And for all the points that you earn, what you can do with them would be to redeem, for example, for vouchers. Um, some, some credit cards also give you like dining vouchers, shopping vouchers. Um, you can even offset your credit card bill with the, the points that you've earned or um, transfer them to your frequent flyer program of choice. And that gives you miles as well. So there would be also cards um, that may not earn you miles directly, but the points that you earn can be redeemed for miles. And in general, the rule of thumb is that the redemption rate for miles gives you a better value. So meaning to say that for every dollar that you spend, um, by re redeeming your points that you earn for miles, you actually get more value than redeeming it for a voucher. Now, the third uh, type of reward that you can earn on your card would be the cashback cards. So what this means is that for every dollar you spend, um, you will get a cashback that's equivalent to a percentage of your spend. And this amount of money will be something that you can use to offset your next bill. So the UOB1 card here that I have um, as an example, you can earn up to 5% cashback on your spend. So what this means is that um, the, the maximum 5% cashback is when you spend about $2,000 every month for three months straight. And that means that over the course of a year, so imagine if you're spending $2,000 a month, over the course of a year at $24,000, a 5% cashback means that you actually save $1,200 on payments that you're making today. And this is a hefty sum if you think about it. Um, if you combine you know, your, the cards and the different um, spend that you have, you can actually be saving quite a bit of money every year. Next, uh, we'll talk about like the different types of bonus categories as well. So these cards um, that I mentioned earlier, you, know, you generally earn a flat earn rate on everything that you're spending. But there are also cards that give you really good and generous bonus points or, or cashback on different categories. So if you talk about like online spend, if you're someone who spends online a lot, you shop, you know, you, you buy um, movie tickets and, and so on online, you can get actually get 10 times points with the DBS Women's World MasterCard. Um, and if you're someone who enjoys dining out, you can use the OCBC 365 card, which gives you a 6% cashback not just on your dining spend, but also on your food delivery services, like food panda and delivery and so on. And for groceries, um, that's something that everyone you know, buys as well. Um, using a card like Maybank Family and Friends, you can get 8% cashback at selected supermarkets. And if you combine you know, your different spend, you can actually be earning quite a bit of additional savings or points on your different um, types of spend that you're doing every month. There are also other types of rewards and benefits that uh, we shouldn't forget about. So we have sign up, sign up offers or sign up bonuses. Um, this is very attractive because basically every card issuing bank wants you to sign up for their card. And for signing up for the card and making some spend um, during the first, um, usually about one to three months of getting a new card, they would actually typically give you some great bonuses or like a free gift. Um, so one example is uh, we have uh, like cards currently that you can get a bonus offer um, when you sign up for a Citibank Premier Miles card. And when you spend $9,000 within the first three months, you can actually earn 45,000 additional air miles on your card. So it's really important as well to time like when you are applying for a card with the time when you have a big expense that you want to pay for. 
to maximize the benefits that you can get. Other cards give, um, you know, sign up offers such as like a, a free hotel night stay or like maybe a luggage as well. And for most um, travel, travel or miles related cards, you also get a whole suite of travel benefits. Um, this ranges from like a free night stay at a hotel that the, the card issuing bank has tied up with, uh, lounge access at the, at the airport, um, hotel limousine transfers, or um, you know, many other types of like travel related benefits that are tied to your card. So by, just by signing up for the card, you actually get access to a whole suite of benefits as well. Um, and the last thing is on promotions. So for in Singapore, the card issuing banks also partner with many different types of merchants, uh, meaning like your dining, your restaurants and your, your retail shops and so on to offer discounts to card holders. And what this means is that, you know, you go to a specific restaurant to dine at, you can, you know, get a special discount. So Yobi, for example, has about a 10 to 15% uh, discount when you use the card at uh, uh, Ritz-Carlton Hotels or like American Express cards, um, you know, the, the Platinum card gives you a 50 up to 50% discount at a whole suite of hotel restaurants, as well as other popular restaurants when you dine in a group of two. So these are also very attractive promotions that, you know, we typically sign up for cards for so that we can leverage on the, the discounts and, and maximize the returns that we get on every dollar that we're spending on. So the other important thing to look at is also like uh, there are many different types of platforms in which you can sign up for cards online these days. Um, and you, you know, when you are signing up for a card, do shop around, like you can look at the bank's website or you can also look at other um, like, uh, credit card comparison sites such as Money Smart, SingSaver and the like, um, where they also typically have very good benefits and offers for signing up for the card. So I think the rewards piece is something that we are all quite familiar with. And um, that's the reason why a lot of uh, us here have multiple cards in the wallet, because that's where you get to maximize based on where you're spending, what you're doing today and what you're transacting on. But the next um, benefit that we want to talk about today is also like specifically for businesses. Um, you know, we talk about how credit cards have an interest-free period that doesn't always come across as something that we we are mind, that mindful about when it comes to personal spend. But as a business owner or as a, someone from a finance in, in a finance role in a business, um, using credit cards for your business expenses actually benefits you as well. So you can free up a lot of cash uh, when you put your transactions onto your card. What this means is that uh, if, you know, if you pay with cash, um, take an example, like you, know, you have an insurance premium that is due at the start of the month. If you pay it with cash or bank transfer, um, the money actually leaves your, your bank account immediately. Well, so if you put it onto card and you time it right, uh, your, your insurance provider gets the payment on time, but you might actually only get your card bill at the end of the month. So that's about one month interest-free period, but it's not due yet. So you normally have about a 55 days interest-free period in total. So that means that your card bill is only due in about a month's time. Now, this means that you can get a total of about two months of interest-free period on your insurance premium that you have already paid for and your insurer has already received the money for. And this means that as a company, um, if you put a lot of your expenses onto cards, it helps with optimizing your cash flow and it helps with delaying the impact of um, you know, a big expense onto your bottom line. In addition, um, this is interest-free and there's no additional cost as long as you pay your card bill on time. So that's really the benefit of being able to use and maximize um, your credit card for all the transactions that you have for your business. And what can you do with the cash on hand? I think that's you know um, something that every business owner is anyway looking for. But um, some other things that you know some of our, our customers are looking at is also um, being able to use the additional cash on hand to um, you know invest in other in other places and get additional interest or returns on this um, the cash that you are you're holding on for an additional two months. Uh, for businesses, there's obviously a lot of other growth opportunities that you can pursue and you can use the cash on hand to fund growth, um, such as marketing activities or, or and, um, you know, some uh, upgrading possibilities for your business. Um, and of course, you know, for every business, having like a cash reserve is also important. And this helps to uh, serve, for, serve as some buffer that you can help um, to delay any potential impact on your bottom line. Uh, the third benefit that we talk about is around simplifying our payment processes. So with finance, um, you know, in finance teams, there are often many different types of payments that you're doing today. 
you might be making check payments to some suppliers, um, cash payments to others, or bank transfer to um, another suite of, of for another group of expenses. But by putting everything onto a card, you can actually simplify your payments. So with manual um, payment types like check or cash, they are all manual and tracking and, and uh, you know, being able to stay on top of these payments can often be very challenging. But by putting them all onto a credit card, you have a complete digital trail of all your payments. Everything is tracked on your card statement and you have complete visibility in terms of what your company is spending on or what the employees are spending on if everyone has a card um, under the corporate card uh, program of your company. In addition, um, the bills will be consolidated. So everything is on one credit card bill and you just need to pay off one bill at the end of each month. And lastly, um, you know, it's really convenient because there's no manual processing needed. And that means that you eliminate errors that comes along with manual processing or reconciliation that's required. And so that's, you know, why we generally love using cards. And the earlier mentioned um, three benefits are the reasons that, you know, we use our cards for things like dining or entertainment, shopping, transport, um, and travel. And this is very much in our personal ex uh, personal you know, um, expenses that these form up a, a percentage of what we are spending on each month. But there could be also other things that we don't necessarily get to use our cards for. So that brings us to the next poll that we have. Um, what are you currently using your credit cards for? So for, you know, the, the I think 90 plus percent of you who have stated that you have cards, uh, we'd like to hear what are the items that you are using your cards for. Okay, I just launched the second poll. Let's see the votes. Okay, people are voting. Okay, so far, so 100% would say uh, is a uh, personal day-to-day -day necessities so dining grocery shopping then we have okay now it's changing but still is the first then we have mm -hmm. second place business employee expenses like travel and entertainment with clients mm -hmm. third right. would be personal large expenses so the first one is still the first so personal day-to-day -day necessities second business employee expenses Third, personal large expenses. expenses. Great, thanks, thanks, Carla. So as you can see from the poll, um, I think you know majority of large expenses, you know, be it your personal expenses or business expenses, aren't usually charged to cards. And um, we were doing, we wanted to do the poll to just um, you know see what the response is like. And this is very, very much similar to all the people that we speak to on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So the question is, you know, how can we shift all these large expenses, unconventional expenses onto your cards? Because the reason that these expenses typically can't be paid by cards is because cards are not accepted by the recipients that we are talking about here. So here, if you look at, um, you know, the chart that we have, basically we have, you know, mainly people using their cards for dining, entertainment, shopping, transport or travel. But in your day-to-day -day life, the things that you can't put on cards or you're not putting on cards today would be things like rental, for example, if you're renting a place or if you stay in a condominium, um, you know, you have property management fees that you need to pay. It taxes, that's, uh, you know, something that's uh, pretty much something that everyone has to pay on an income tax, uh, whether it's an income tax or like if you're running a business, corporate tax and GST. Um, insurance premiums, there are many times where uh, life insurance premiums cannot be paid by card. Or even like school fees, um, you know, I imagine a number of you might have kids in international schools and, and a lot of them don't accept cards here as well. Um, other salary, other um, payment categories could be things like car loans or, or helper salary. So, you know, obviously if you have a helper at home, she doesn't accept card payments and you can't use your credit card for all these payments. And what this means is that these, if you look at it, um, you know, everything that's in the teal color, the turquoise color, are really large payments, um, typically in a, in, in a uh, range of thousands of dollars. Um, and these payments make up the most of your recurring spend every month. But yet, we are not, not able to earn or enjoy the same card benefits that we talked about on all these big payments. 
And if you think about it from a business point of view, you know, it's very, very much the same. Like typically like a SME or, or, or MNC event, um, you know, you might be, you might have a card, but you can only use your card typically for like dining, um, for entertainment with clients or like transport and travel and uh, maybe, you know, online subscriptions. And for that reason, a lot of SMEs may not have a card today for their business because the majority of your business expenses, such as your rent, uh, your commercial rent or your retail rent, your supplier invoices, um, payroll, corporate taxes, insurance, and so on cannot be put on credit card because these payments typically don't have cards accepted. So the question is, you know, what can we do to be able to shift all these payments onto card so that we can enjoy the same benefits of rewards of being able to tap on your interest-free period to free, free up your cash and to simplify your payments processes for, for the majority of your business payments. So today, in fact, you know, there's only a very, very small percentage of B2P, B2B payments that can be made by card and are made by card globally. So there's about $120 trillion of business payments that's being made. And uh, you know, the studies have shown that only 2% of these payments can be put on card today and are put on card today. And the reason for that is, you know, if you are in the B2B space, imagine uh, you're paying like a, uh, like you're running a restaurant and you're paying a, uh, your suppliers who supply you ingredients or the wholesaler, typically they don't accept card payments. Or if you're um, you know, running an event and you're engaging a marketing or, or event organization, uh, uh, event organizer service, they typically wouldn't accept card payments as well. So these are the payments that don't get put onto cards and form the 98% of payments that have to be paid by some other form of, of uh, payment method. And what this means is that for businesses, um, you know, there are often times where they do have a corporate card. And I think there's 20 plus percent of you that um, have stated that you do have a corporate card or a business card. And oftentimes, um, your, your credit card line is underutilized. So, you know, um, quite often we see about 80% um, card lines are underutilized. And this is really a shame because this is a credit limit that the bank has already granted you. It's credit limit that you can be using to maximize your cash flow, to optimize and you know, delay the payment for up to 55 days and to also earn rewards on your cards. But you're not able to tap on this uh, credit line today because the number of payments that can accept cards or that you can use your cards for are generally quite limited in the business space. So what CardUp does, um, and this is the problem that you know, we've identified um, and uh, our, our founder, Nikki, she comes from the cards industry as well. And that's uh, you know, a, a major problem that we've seen that there's a big uh, gap in terms of card acceptance in the business space. And so what CardUp set up, sets up to do is to help businesses and individuals maximize the benefits of credit cards for everything that they're spending on today. So with CardUp, um, as a, payments, a card payments platform, we enable card payments uh, to suppliers or to recipients, even where cards are not accepted. This means that you can shift all the payments that you currently make today, whether it's by a check or bank transfer onto your credit card. So what that means is that, you know, um, you can now pay, for example, your rent to your landlord with your credit card or even your employee salaries, you know, your payroll. This is an overhead that you incur every month, regardless of how your sales is performing. And this is something that you can now use your credit card for um, by processing your payments on card up. Similarly, like for supplier payments, like, um, you know, we talked about a lot of B2B vendors where they don't accept card payments. Uh, with card up's platform, you can use your cards for these. Um, and for card up, it's not just your domestic payments, but if you do have um, international payments that you're making. So again, you know, coming back to the restaurant example, if you are running a restaurant and you're importing your supplies from Italy, for example, you can actually use your card line to make the payments. And uh, this is really a, a, sim a very similar and a transparent process when you use the card. And we can talk a bit more about that in a short while. So the question is, you know, how does card up work? Uh, basically, as an online platform, we stand in the gap between the payer or the card holder and the supplier or the recipient of funds. So when you come on to our platform, basically you set up your payment to the recipient that you want to pay. And your recipient doesn't even have to be on border onto CardUp or to know that you know, you're using CardUp to make a payment. So as a, as a card holder, you come on, you set up a payment. So for example, you know, you're gonna pay your rent uh, to your landlord. You enter your, your landlord's details and um, your payment will be charged by CardUp onto your credit card 
with a processing fee to enable this payment. What happens is that your landlord will then receive the payment via bank transfer directly into their bank account with a payment reference from you. So in other words, you know, your recipient will just be receiving it as a normal bank transfer payment and uh, they can reconcile this very easily by the payment reference that you enter. So what this actually means is that you can now use CutUp to shift every single payment that you're making via bank transfer onto your credit cards to maximize the benefits of the cards that you were, that you that you have. Um, and going back to the points earlier, allowing you to earn rewards on your, your business expenses um, to also you know, maximize the, your, your cash flow by um, tapping on the interest-free period of your cards. So to enable payments um, to cut to non-cut accepting uh, recipients, cut out charges a processing fee. And this also helps to keep the platform safe and secure as well as cover the cost of every card transaction that we process. So earlier we talked about um, you know, the kind of payments that we have. So if we go back to a, to a personal example, um, you know, majority of your payments today cannot be put onto cards. But now with card up, um, you know, what it means is that uh, before being able for the for the amount that you are not you are able to put on the card, um, say you know your dining, your shopping, and so on adds up to maybe about three thousand dollars a month. That means that over the course of a year, if you use a credit card that earns you one point four miles per dollar, um, which is which is the general um earn rate on the miles card, you could get about fifty thousand miles a year. And what this enables you to get is a return economy class ticket to Thailand. So for example, in the course of a year on your personal card, you might be able to redeem a, a flight ticket to, to Thailand um, and that's what you can do at most. But now, if you can shift all your non-card expenses onto card, um, and that means that, you know, for example, you have maybe about an um, additional $8,000 that compri that's comprised of like rental fees, taxes, insurance premiums, um, you know, maybe international school fees and so on. At a, at a, using the same um, card with the same earn rate, you can now get an additional 134,000 miles a year. And what this means is that you can actually redeem a return business class flight to New Zealand. So imagine if you can shift all these payments, which is maybe about 70, 75% of your spend every month onto your credit card. Um, after, after a year, um, instead of getting a return economy flight ticket to Thailand, you can now actually get a business class ticket to New Zealand. So uh, a more premium class ticket, a longer haul ticket. And that's really what a lot of our um, you know, customers are using us for to be able to rack up the miles on all these expenses that they are making every month anyway. So earlier on, I mentioned um, you know, there is a fee that cut up charges in order to process all these payments. So the question we often get is, you know, um, is it worth it for me to pay a fee? And what does this fee, how does this fee um, work out in, you know, versus the, the value of what I'm getting from using my credit card? So even though you're paying a fee, um, you know, you actually can still fly business class or redeem this New Zealand uh, business class ticket for 50% less than what you would have paid via the airline. So back um, to the earlier example, if you're paying $11,000 in terms of your monthly expenses, at a 1.4 miles per dollar, you'll be earning over 188,000 miles in the course of a year. With, the, with this mouse, you can redeem the business class ticket to New Zealand. And uh, if you were to buy this off the airline, it would actually cost you about $6,500. So um, earlier on, I mentioned there's a processing fee that cut up charges. At our, um, our promotional rate currently of 2.25%, you can you will pay about slightly less than three thousand dollars for um in the in the form of the fees that you pay for your transactions, and what this means is that you are actually able to redeem a flight that is worth six thousand five hundred at less than three thousand dollars, which means that you save more than fifty percent on your flight ticket. So if you if we go back to the earlier example, um you know you are now able to redeem that. Uh, New Zealand business class ticket and although you are paying a fee it's still less than half of what it would have cost you to buy a ticket off the airline and if you think about it um, you know in terms of like where you normally travel I assume most of us uh, most of us in the in the call you know you would be traveling back to Italy whenever the flight resumes or, or whenever travel resumes and um, using card up would mean that you can easily rack up miles to fly back home at uh, uh, less than half the price on a business class flight so if you're thinking about it from a business perspective, you know, imagine how many miles you can now earn on your business expenses. 
So earlier we're talking about like an individual and your your expenses may be, you know, about five times that if you are running a business. So at $55,000 um, of monthly expenses, in the course of a year, that's over 940,000 miles that you can earn. And what does that get you? You know, there's a whole like range of uh, flight ticket uh, options that you can redeem for. Um, you know, that could get you five business class return flights to New Zealand. Um, or, you know, six business class tickets to Tokyo, or like if you're talking about Europe, you know, that's about two business class return flights to Europe. So simply by shifting all your, your business payments onto your credit card, that's the amount of rewards that you can earn and what you can redeem for. So I think the question, you know, we, we do get um, these days uh, with the, the travel restrictions, are air miles still worth collecting or is, is it still worth it for me to use my card to get miles? Um, so the, the two things I think that, you know, we should be mindful of is that number one, um, there are cards where you have no expiry date on your points or your miles earned. Um, so you can earn the miles until and, and keep them, hold on to them until the time where travel resumes. And by then you would have enough miles to be able to redeem for a good um, high value ticket. So some examples of cards would be like the OCBC 90 degrees North card or um, City Premier Miles card. Um, and, you know, this is really a good time to start racking up the miles because as you can see, it, it's not um, something that you can earn overnight unless you have really big um, transactions to make. It may take you a couple of months or even a year to be able to rack up enough miles to be able to redeem for the flight. So this is a, as good a time as other to start because there are lots of promotions that are going on at this time as well. And earlier we talked about um, the ability for you to also then tap on the interest rate period of your card to extend your payables or to delay the impact of the payments on your cash flow. So here's an example of what that means. Um, you know, if you are a business and you have a credit card line of about 100,000, you can actually use $100,000 to pay for your payroll, your rent, your suppliers, and delay these payments for up to 55 days. So given the example here, um, you know, there are cards in the market where you can earn cash back on your, your card spend and that's uncapped as well. So using a, a card, for example, like a Citibank cashback card, um, you don't earn and you don't pay any interest on the on the um, payment as long as you pay your card bill on time. There is a fee that's charged by card up. Um, our our rate rate of sticker pricing is two point six percent, but that goes down as low as zero point eight percent. Um, at uh, one point six percent cashback on this card, you actually get a return of a thousand six hundred dollars on your spend. And that means that the total cost of using um, card up with a cashback card, like the Citibank cashback card, is about just under $1,000. So that's uh, the $2,600 minus the $1,600. So with this cost, um, you know, when we look at analyzing this cost, it's about 6.3% per annum to use a card that you already have your credit limit um, to delay your payments for up to 55 days. And when you compare this to other sources of financing in the market, so say a business term loan, um, you know, that's about 11% per annum or like an unsecured overdraft, um, that's about 14.8% uh, per annum. And the, the cost of using your, your credit card um, with the cashback on card up is about half of that at 6.3% per annum. So it's a really cost effective way um, of tapping onto your credit limit to delay your payments for your business. In addition, this is instant because this credit line that you have is something that you, is already pre-approved. Um, you don't need to submit any more documents or like um, apply for a new, you know, for a loan or, or apply for more financing for your business. Um, in addition, there is no collateral needed because you only tap onto your credit card line. Um, there is no minimum payment amount as well. Um, you pay or use as much as you want to rather than taking a loan of 100000 but maybe only using about 50% of it and having to pay interest fee on the whole um, amount that you've borrowed and lastly you know it's really flexible um, you use it anytime you need any anywhere you need it so with card it's really easy to get started um, you just sign up in a matter of a few clicks and it's a completely free sign up so you can get an account that's free and use it only whenever you need to um, there's a small processing fee per transaction that we charge as i mentioned earlier um, and the last thing is that, you know, it's, it's very straightforward because your recipient doesn't need to be onboarded. Um, you can just set up the payment to them directly on your own. So just, um, you know, before we end off, we go into the last section around like what um, you look out for and how do you choose the best credit card for your needs. 
I think we've covered quite a lot of content earlier around like the mouse cards, the cashback cards and the points cards. Um, so really like, you know, what is it that's uh, suitable for you and, and what kind of card should you look out for? So there are a couple of factors to consider um, and questions that, you know, you can ask yourself, uh, which type of card do you want to go for? Is it a mouse card? Do you want mouse um, to get rewards and, and be able to redeem for flight tickets? Or do you want cashback, which gives you direct savings on every single dollar they are spending? Um, another question that you, you should be asking is, you know, what is your money spend behavior like? Do you have a lot of small ticket items or do you have um, you know, quite a lot of um, uh, transactions that you are able to put onto your card? So whether it's your personal expense or whether you're looking at it from a business perspective, a tip that I would give is that, you know, if you have a family, it's also good to combine all the expenses that your, your family has onto the same card if you're using a mouse card, because that will help you rack up your mouse quicker and be able to utilize the mouse before they expire if there is an expiry date on, on your card. Um, the third question, you know, it's also very much around like your personal choice and your personal lifestyle. Do you want to be maximizing every single dollar that you're spending? In which case, um, you know, you would go the full, the full suite and your card strategy should be like owning at least four to five cards where you get bonus um, spend, as I mentioned earlier on, around the, the spend that you make on every type of uh, a category. So whether you're dining or whether you're shopping, um, online and so on, groceries, uh, you use a card that makes the, the most sense, that you get the most returns on. Or if you're someone who, you know, you, you might be time strapped and you don't have time to think about like, do I use this card here? Do I use that card there? Have I hit my minimum spend? Have I, you know, maxed out the, the cashback that I can earn? Then there are cards in the market where you basically just choose like the highest earn rate possible on your gen on general spend. And um, for mouse cards, that would be around a 1.4 percent, a 1.4 miles per dollar earn rate. Um, or if you are, you know, you have a higher income, there are cards out there that earns you 1.6 miles per dollar. And basically, you get a flat um, earn rate for every dollar that you spend. So you don't have to think about it. There is no cap as well. Just keep spending on the card. That's it. Um, or if you're using a cashback card, then there are um, a lot of cards that give you an unlimited cashback of about 1.5 to 1.6% uh, per, per dollar spent. So there will be cards like the Standard Charter Unlimited card or the Citibank cashback card that uh, we talked about or the American Express True Cashback card. All of these cards give you this uh, very similar earn rate. Similarly, no cap, just spend. There is no need to track. Have I met? Have I spent enough to hit the cashback amount this month? Um, have I spent too much that I don't get any more cashback? These are all like fast free cards as well. And then the last question I think is, you know, really like what do you want out of using your cards? So for example, um, if you are if you are someone who wants to earn air miles for less, then uh, you know you can use cards like the Yobi Privy Miles cards. Um, use the cards with the highest earn rate and points with no expiry date um, and you know now you can earn miles a lot faster as well so like these are some examples of cards in the market that's catered to that and if you're looking at someone uh, you're looking at um, cashback and you are you know also looking at the second benefit of using cards that we talked about which is to free up cash for your business um, and to you know get lower cost of funds for your business then using um, the cashback cards that we mentioned the Citibank card Amex or, or Standard Chartered card will give you like unlimited cashback on the expenses that you're making and that means that you lower the cost of financing for your business um, and this basically helps you know your, your business both earn um, some re rewards as well as to also maximize your, your cash flow. So that's pretty much the end of the sharing, sharing session and we do have um, like some promo quotes that we would like to offer our guests here today at the end of the session. Uh, but by, before we do that, uh, we'd like to open up for any questions and, and you know, uh, comments from the floor as well. Thank you, Diana. Actually, I don't know if you can see this uh, question in the q and I uh, can read it out loud if you want. So there's someone asking, yeah. I realize there is a minimum support for Amex card on car loan and invoice, etc. Will there be more support for it in the near future? I think you wanted to say, the, will there be more support okay, in the near future? Great. Uh, thanks, Carla. Um, and a, a good question. So there is uh, uh, a restriction. There are some restrictions on Amex cards. Um, as you rightfully pointed out, Ronnie, um, there are uh, certain payment categories in which uh, Amex cards cannot be processed. 
So this is, uh, this is something that we have been working very closely with Amex on um, in order to open up the support of Amex cards on all categories that we process on. Um, there is definitely discussions and, and you know, there's been a lot of uh, campaigns that we've been doing with Amex to promote the use of Amex cards on our platform. So we do believe that in um, time to come, there will be some poss there's a possibility of opening up um, the acceptance of Amex cards on other payment categories that you may not be able to use your cards on at this very point of time. Um, so we'll definitely be you know, reaching out to all our customers once that happens in terms of what we can use cards for. Um, but today, you know, um, in terms of like Amex, being able to use Amex cards on all these categories, like Cut Up is the only platform in the market that offers um, uh, Amex card usage. Okay. Thank you, Diana. I think this is answered on this question. Um, let's see if there are any more questions. But actually, there is one. Oh, yeah, sorry. Someone has asked, what about online payment platform like Payla or Alipay? Do they offer promotions? Um, okay, so I think, thanks, thanks for your question. In terms of the other uh, payment platforms out there, I think it's, you know, um, slightly different in terms of of the capability and, and what they do. Um, the, the, the reason for cut up is really around the ability to use like your existing credit cards that you have, or you know, if you want to apply for a new card, but to use credit cards as a primary mode of payment um, to make these payments. We don't uh, have like direct integrations or, or um, you know, PayLai or Alipay would be separate like payment uh, platforms in the market. Um, but that's it, you know, for businesses, we do have the a capability that we, we haven't talked about here today because um, today's topic is around the, the benefits of using our credit card. But we do have a, a business product that's around helping businesses collect payments by credit card. Um, and that means that, you know, as a business owner, you can now accept card payments from your customers without any integration needed. You don't have to do code for payment gateway um, and you also don't, you can choose not to incur any costs. And for that um, option, we will be opening it up to non-card payments um, in the future as well. So um, I think the question around like PayLa and Alipay, there is um, today, like there isn't a direct uh, like uh, correlation or, or integration with card up per se. Oh, well, actually we've been having like some, like many questions linked to each other. <laughs> so let me just read the, uh... Uh, this yeah. one. So, uh, can you please explain how it, it is possible to charge non-traditional spend? The merchant will be penalized since the card the cards charge a percentage, a top percentage. I don't know if it's the if the question is clear. So, it's asking how it is possible to charge non-traditional spend. I think he's saying since the merchant will be penalized. I'm not really sure, like not really, this question is not really clear to me. I don't know if you, if you can read yeah, it. Um, yeah, I, I can uh, try to answer this and uh, if it's not exactly what you're asking, you know, feel free to post a question a, a second time. Um, I think if I can understand, if I can try to interpret it, I think um, you're asking, like, firstly, the first question is how is cut up able to help you charge um, non-traditional spend onto your cards? Um, and then the second part of it is around like the merchant. So in this case, cut up is actually the merchant um, on record with the banks. Um, and what we do is as a merchant, we charge all these payments onto, onto your card and deliver the payment to your end recipient via bank transfer. So this is what uh, cut up's platform sets out to do. And this is how we've built a platform to enable you to charge all these payments, such as your rent payment, your tax payments, um, you know, payroll payments onto your card even though like your landlord or like, you know, the, the, the Inland Revenue Department um, doesn't accept card payments. So that is what you do on the platform. When you set up a payment, card up as a merchant will charge your credit card for the amount and we deliver the funds via bank transfer. So us, um, you know, we do incur a cost for every single payment that uh, is, is being charged as well. And that's the reason why there is a processing fee that we pass on to the customers um, for these payments. So I think like if you think about like uh, today, if you go out to Starbucks and buy a cup of coffee, um, there isn't, uh, you, don't, you don't pay anything additional for using your, your, your credit card versus using cash. Um, but that's the, the, the reason for that is because Starbucks and you know, most um, like consumer businesses accept cards already. Um, in the cases where cards are not accepted and you have no other way of using your card, that's where card up comes into the picture. And that's where we then charge a fee um, to enable you to use your cards because we as card up do also incur a fee uh, for all these payments. 
Thank you, Diana. So Thank you so much. Question. Yeah. Then for any personal questions, I would just would like to invite you to write directly to Diana. She would be very happy to follow your any your case. Now we are just going for, moving forward to you know any general questions that everyone could understand. Okay, so we have another question for me. How could we use Cardup to pay rent to the landlord? Can landlord agree? Landlord can accept payment by Jira, but no visa. Uh, great question. So I think this is exactly why um, you know Cardup is around because a lot of times the landlord may not accept cut cut payments directly. Um, for the landlord, they don't want to incur the fee or, you know, they may not have the means to integrate or set up a payment, a credit card terminal to accept your payment. Um, so I'm not sure if this is in the context of a personal payment or a, a commercial landlord. But in any case, um, you can actually use Cardup to make your rent payment. Um, and what what your, uh, your landlord actually doesn't need to know about it. As long as your landlord accepts bank transfer payments, you can actually set up these payments by um, Cardup uh, onto your credit card. And what we would need from you would be like your tenancy agreement. Um, if there are specific arrangements around like gyro and so on that your landlord has, um, you know, why don't I, what I suggest, um, you know, feel free to write into Cardup, hello at cardup.co and we'll be very much happy to help you uh, review the tenancy agreement that you have and look at the payment options that your landlord accepts and, uh, you know, work with you on how you can set up your payment in a way that your landlord, uh, you know, basically will not, typically need to interfere or like need to, to know about the way that you're setting up your payment. Okay. Thank you, Diana. Will you uh, like support like in case there will be any problem uh, with the, know, this kind of payment like this, for example, in the example Nick does with landlord, could you be like uh, uh, liaised with the, in this case, like for the payment? Okay. Sorry, can you say that again, Carla? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. I mean, will, will you support then the person if he's not sure how to proceed with this thing? Is there like a support team who, who will help? Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, we have our customer success team. So, um, you know, either go on to our website, cardup.co and fill in the inquiry form. Um, send an email to hello at cardup.co or even a Facebook mes uh, message to our cardup uh, cut up Facebook page and we typically get back within the same business day, if not the next business day. Um, definitely we'll be able to support you on the onboarding process, setting up your account and getting your payment set up. Thank you, Diana. And moving to the next question. I hope we actually have a lot of questions. Good. Yeah, so uh, this one is <laughs> asking, can you explain what card rebates you are referring to such that the cost of funds increases from 2.6% to more than 6%? Ah, okay, great. Um, so this, I think, is the, the, the slide that I was showing earlier on with the comparison between the different finance options. So I can go back there quickly. Um, so here we have the, the, the payment um, amount of $100,000 that you may be looking to put onto your card. And uh, for your credit card, it typically gives you about 55 days of interest-free period. So as long as you charge your, your card um, on the first day of your billing cycle, you can maximize this 55 days. So I think the question is around how the 2.6% fee um, eventually works out to 6.3% per annum. So what we do in this instance is, is we apply the 2.6% fee on the $100,000 um, that you're charging to card, which means you will pay a, two, two, uh, a processing fee of $2,600 on $100,000 worth of payments. Because you use a cashback card that give, gives you 1.6%, um, you will get back cashback of about $1,600. And if you offset that $1,600 from the $2,600 that you're paying, the amount that you're paying is actually only about $959 to finance this 100 k for 55 days. So if you take um, $959 for 55 days, analyze, you divide it by 55 and you you multiply that by the, the number of days in the year 365, that works out to about 6.3% per annum. Um, and the reason we do that is because, you know, when we talk about cost of financing, um, you know, most other financing options in the market uh, provides you the interest rates uh, at a per, per annum basis. Um, so we wanted to just make sure that if you are comparing apples to apples in terms of uh, what the cost is per annum, you are able to get that full picture. And that's why we then analyze the, the 2.6 or the 2.6 after the rebate um, into a per annum fee or rather than the 55 days that you see here. 
So I hope this is uh, clear. Um, but again, if it's not, you know, feel free to drop us a note. We'll be very happy to help explain um, and work yeah. out, you know, based on the actual amount that you want to pay the card that you have, um, you know, help you with the numbers as well. Yes, I also wanted to add, if you would like also to share um, like your questions to me and then I will direct to, to Diana. And I'm not sure if you have your email uh, address at the end of the slide, so maybe people can take note. But anyway, you can easily contact us at marketing at aitochamber.org.sg and I will be very happy to direct your questions to Diana. Thanks, okay. Carla. Thanks for offering. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Uh, another question is asking, does Cardap monitor the best offers in the market so that you can channel the payment via credit card that is most useful? Yes, we do actually um, partner with many banks as well in Singapore. So, um, you know, I mentioned earlier on, like, for example, American Express, we do have ongoing campaigns with them um, to lower the fee uh, for using Amex cards on Carda. Um, we do also have like uh, a number of promotions coming up very soon um, during income tax season. So generally, you know, you get your, your notice of assessment in April to May and you start paying between May to July, August period. So we do typically have some offers um, during this period as well. Some we partner with uh, banks and, and be able to offer like better rates on certain cards. So we, um, to answer your question, we, you know, we do work with all the different issuers here in terms of that. Or we also monitor that on our end. Um, so whenever like you have any questions around that, do also write in to us. Our customer success team will be very happy to help you, um, you know, identify which card gives you the best value at this point of time. Um, for us in general as a platform, it's it's uh, you know quite card neutral in the sense that you can set up as many cards as you want. Um, you can use any Visa, Mastercard, American Express, or China China Union Pay card on card up whether it's a locally issued card or even a, an international card. So even if you have a card that's maybe issued in Italy, for example, you can use that on card up. Um, and, you know, for us, there is no restriction and you can set up multiple cards on your account as well. So um, we will be able to guide you in terms of like what makes sense in terms of the different cards that you have. Um, if you do if you do want some help on that, um, write into us as well. All right. Very clear, Diana. And I think we have time for one last question. She's saying, um, can I use more than one card, like personal and corporate on a business account? And is it possible to combine points maybe? So on a, on a business account with CardUp, yes, you can set up multiple cards. So if you have like personal cards as well as corporate cards, you can register all your different cards onto our platform and be able to you know, choose which card you want to use for each payment that you're making. So maybe today you're making a rent payment on your corporate card, um, but tomorrow you want to you pay a, a supplier invoice with your personal card. That's that's entirely possible. Um, just register and set up all your cards on the platform. Um, in terms of, uh, sorry, what's the, the second question, Carla? Was there another yes. question? Wait a second. He was just asking, uh, so personal corporate and business account, and maybe if you can combine the points, like you can combine the benefits. Ah, okay. Thanks, sorry, I forgot the question. So um, on the points, that's the points that you actually earn on your own card account. So you would earn the points directly on your personal card account um, and the points directly on your corporate card account. Um, in most cases, I, I think, you know, you wouldn't be able to combine the points in that, in that sense because they are held directly with the, the bank that has given you or you've taken the card from. So um, yeah, on CardUp's end, there are actually no points that, that you are earning. It's enabling you to use your card, um, your existing card, and earning the points on the card that you already own. So I hope that helps Good. clarify. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. I think uh, time is uh, almost half. So I don't know, Diana, if you would like to give just a couple of uh, thoughts, like final thoughts before we close. Yes. Um, so as promised, I think at the at the earlier part we talked about the offers. Um, so you know we would really like to help you maximize the benefits of your card to earn rewards, to free up cash for your business, and to simplify and digitize your payments. Um, so we do have offers for for the attendees of today's session. Uh, we'll be sending them them out via email to to all of you who have registered and attended for our session. Um, so we have two promo codes that you can use to make your first business payment or first personal payment for free. Um, you can use the promo code ICCS200. Um, you will get $200 off your first business payment. So basically, um, you know, when you're setting up a payment, um, there will be a processing fee that's incurred. But if you apply this promo code, it will automatically deduct $200 off your payment, which means that um, if you are making a payment on your business account, a payment of about $7,600 will be completely free for you. 
Um, and if you are looking to use this for your personal expense, um, you can get a $30 discount off the, the um, fee that's being charged, which means a payment of slightly more than $1,000 would be free for you as well. Um, so we really hope that uh, you know, you'll be able to maximize the benefits of your card and to see you using card up after this session. Um, so that's pretty much the, the end of uh, what we wanted to share today. And thank you very much, everyone, for your time and all the engaging questions that you have as well. Thank you, Diana. Thank you once again. I see that someone Thanks, is Carla. waiting to uh, Just, I'm sorry, we are running out of time, but I uh, promise we will contact you after the, uh, the webinar so that I can put you in direct contact with Diana. She will be very happy to help you once again. So thank you, Diana. Thank you, Carla, for organizing this uh, informative session. It was very interesting. And thank you once again, everyone, for joining us. Have a nice evening. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank Have a good evening. Bye. Bye-bye.